bright sunny day out. I've been kind of hit and miss with that lately and certainly been cold, but it's good to see everybody here this morning. Uh, I would ask everyone to take some time to look through your bulletin. There are a number of announcements in there. I'll touch on just a few of them here. Um, if you look on the back on your calendar for the week, uh, Tuesday at 5 p.m., we have the Shrove Fat Tuesday celebration. Uh, that's a Good Shepherd Episcopal uh, here on Forest Hill Avenue again at 5 p.m. Um, also on Wednesday at 7 p.m., the Ash Wednesday service. Uh, there will be no choir rehearsal that evening. Okay, choir rehearsal at 7.45, so uh, ignore the little parenthetical note there in your, uh, in your bulletin. At 7.45, there will be choir practice. Uh, so yeah, we have a number of things going on next Sunday, February the 17th. Uh, immediately following service, we'll have a quick uh, call membership meeting. Uh, and that's to vote on the nomination of Ed McCann as a trustee for the church. Immediately following worship, we have the Valentine's Love Your uh, love your flock luncheon. Uh, we'll be serving some pasta at that. And please try to be here if you can be for that. Uh, meet your shepherds and the other people in your flocks. And also that evening, next Sunday evening, Christian concert in Norfolk at 6 o'clock. Um, if you'd like to carpool, we'll meet here at the church by 3 o'clock and head on down for that. Um, also, the Lenten devotionals are available in the Norfolk, so be sure to pick up one of those uh, before you head out today. Are there any other announcements that we need to make? I'd like to add just one quick thing, uh, maybe a little selfish on my part. I know Ben will be going through the, uh, the prayer concerns, but please keep me in your prayers. Um, I woke up this morning with some pretty severe back pain, um, including uh, a number of spasms, some of which were some very intense. And it's kind of moving around, so I think I may be dealing with a kidney stone. So if I see a little fidgety or, or uh, maybe cringe, it's nothing that Ben said. Um, so <laughs> please just keep me in your prayers and try to make it through the next hour. Anything else we need to cover? Then let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship with our chiming of the hour and our prayer.
you stand if you're able and join me in our call to worship? Place your hope and trust in Christ, for He is your God. He will open our hearts to Christ, ready for the vision He places before us. Our processional hymn is number 611, Rise Up, O Saints of God. Rather, we have renounced the secret and shameful ways. 
We do not use deception, nor do we distort the word of God. On the contrary, by setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Come to our time of sharing of joys and concerns. Kevin started us off, and we certainly keep you in prayer during this hour, Kevin. Are there other joys and concerns to lift up from the congregation this morning? Yes, Margaret. Uh, my grandmother, Lori Stroop, has been in the hospital this week for bronchitis. Lori Stroop. Margaret's grandmother has been in the hospital for bronchitis for the last week. She's hoping to go home today. Yes, Carolyn. Uh, Mary Lee's brother, Bill, has passed away. Certainly. Prayers for Mary Lee and her family in the passing of her brother, Bill, which died yesterday. So prayers for Mary Lee and her family. We have other joys or concerns to lift up this morning. Yes, Karen? I don't, for those who didn't know what happened this week, Nikki was yet into another car accident, totaled her car. The joyous part is none of them were hurt. They, she rolled the car three times, and they are all doing fine. Daniel has gotten a job. He has started his job. And little Noah has been very sick. He is starting to feel better. He's been in the hospital. He is home, and he's doing much better. So they did not come because she's not completely well, and she didn't want to take him out of the house yet until he's completely well. He has RSV. So prayers for Nikki and Coach Conlon, Daniel O'Mara and his family. Well, Noah has RSV and they had another hit and run car accident last Sunday night. Rolled the car three times, but everyone is okay. So prayers for that family, for sure. Others? Yeah, Margaret? Thank you that your light 
allow your love and your light to be in those places that others might know you. Lord, we pray for those in our world who are hurting, who are sick, who are in need, that your light would shine to them as well. Help us to be that light, to go into dark places, to be your presence, to help other people see your glory and your love. We pray all of this in Jesus' name.
these offerings up to you, we ask that you continue to show us how we can trust you, how we can know that you do so much more. Bless these offerings and send them forth into your world. Establish your kingdom with them and bless us that your kingdom may be established with us as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. With the boys and girls will come over to the children.
Our communion hymn this morning is number 272, verses 1, 2, and 6.
the bread of life. So we'll continue in prayer. Dear Lord, once again, we have guests at your table to partake of the fruit of the vine. As we enjoy the hospitality of your table, help us to cherish these moments of communion. Sustain us as we attempt to live for you and in your spirit. These things we ask in most holy name.
morning's gospel reading is in the gospel according to Luke. You can find it in your few Bibles on page 1609. It's Luke chapter 9, verses 28 through 36. Well, about eight days after Jesus said this, he took Peter, John, and James with him and went up onto a mountain to pray. As he was praying, the appearance of his face changed, and his clothes became as bright as a flash of lightning. Two men, Moses and Elijah, appeared in glorious splendor, talking with Jesus. They spoke about his departure, which he was about to bring to fulfillment at Jerusalem. Peter and his companions were very sleepy, but when they became fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As the men were leaving, Jesus, Peter said to him, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what he was saying. While he was speaking, a cloud appeared and enveloped them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. A voice came from the cloud saying, This is my son, who I have chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, they found that Jesus was alone. The disciples kept this to themselves and told no one at that time what they had seen. Amen. Join me in prayer. Lord, open our ears that we might hear your word. Open our eyes that we might see your glory. Open our hearts that we might follow you. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. I liked playing sports when I was a kid. I think it had a lot to do with the fact that my dad wanted two boys who played a lot of sports. So he coached all of our teams. He taught us how to do everything. He taught us how to throw a ball, how to catch a ball, how to hit a ball, how to field a ball. Everything. And I learned to trust him because he told me what to do and the results were good. He said, if you swing your bat just like this, you'll make contact with the ball. If you throw with your shoulder pointed in this way, it'll probably go where you're trying to put it. If you make sure you watch the ball all the way into your glove, you have a much better chance to catch it. He earned my trust. I knew that what he was telling me was true. And then when I got into Little League, my dad, as the coach, decided it was time for me to start playing catcher, which was great. I had a good arm. I was really excited about throwing people out when they were trying to steal, and I wasn't afraid of somebody sliding into me at home plate. This was exciting for me. So I got back there, and sure enough, I could throw people out pretty well. Problem was, when the ball hopped before it got to me, I kind of got out of the way. I had no interest in getting hit by it. It's not a good thing when you're a catcher, because especially in Little League, a lot of the pitches end up hopping to you rather than getting to your glove. My dad decided, OK, I've got to do something about this. We need to fix this, because he's good at everything else. He just doesn't know how to block a ball. He'd earned my trust by that point. And so one day he said, come with me, grab your catcher's mitt. We're going out. There was a field nearby, not a baseball field, just a field. It had rocks and everything else in it. He said, come with me. I said, do I need the gear too? He said, no, no gear. He had a baseball, I had a catcher's mitt. And that was it. We went out into this field, and my dad said, all right, take your stance. I'm going to start throwing balls in the dirt to you. And there are rocks, so you don't have any idea which way it's going to bounce. And you're going to block the ball. Anybody else think this sounds like an exciting activity for an eight-year-old? <laughs> I'm going to throw a ball at you. You have nothing protecting you other than your glove, and you have to stop it. My dad's a grown man. He's a big man. I mean, he can throw. And I knew he wasn't going to really hold back. He wasn't going to throw as hard as he could, but he wasn't going to just be lob the ball in and let it bounce off. But I trusted him. I knew that if he said it would work, it would work. I also found out that it would hurt. <laughs> Sometimes when we trust somebody, we have to be willing to hurt for their idea in order to get to the full solution. <coughs> that day I just sat there in the dirt. Every time he thrown, I dropped to my knees and the ball would bounce off my chest, bounce off my shoulder, bounce off my stomach, bounce off my thigh. But eventually I learned to block the baseball. And let me tell you, when I had that gear on, I felt completely invincible because then there was protection and the person throwing the ball wasn't 35 years old. <laughs> but I had to trust him first. I had to know that what he had told me would work, would work. I became a very good catcher because of that trust. But if it hadn't already been built, if it hadn't already been there, there's no chance. No chance. 
case, I was sat there and just kept letting the ball hit me again and again and again. And yeah, I got bruised. It happened. But it was worth it. That's what this morning's scripture is about. It's about trust. At the end of the transfiguration, God says, this is my son, my beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. The disciples were about to be asked to follow someone, do something that seems like it can't possibly go well, can't possibly go right. It says at the beginning of the scripture, Jesus was discussing with Moses and Elijah his departure, his death. This is the starting point on that journey towards the cross, that journey towards Jesus' <coughs> death. Jesus had done small things for his disciples along the way to help them see that they could trust him in some pretty significant things. When he called Peter, there was the miraculous catch of fish. When he called other disciples, he knew things about them that they couldn't possibly know. And along the way, they had seen him healed. They had seen him perform miracles. But if they were going to follow him all the way to the cross, if they were going to have the kind of trust to follow him to Jerusalem when he told them, I am going there to die. They needed something big, something huge. So he took his three disciples, three closest disciples up on the mountaintop. And right there, right then, it was revealed to those disciples who Jesus really and truly was. In the fullness of his glory, he was transfigured. He was shown as not just a man who followed God closely, but as a man who embodied God. The glory of God shone out through him. And then, in case that wasn't enough, the cloud descended and God said, This is my son, my beloved. With him, I am well pleased. Listen to him. The scriptures in Corinthians this morning also talk about beholding God's glory. There are all kinds of scriptures about that glory, about that majesty, about that wonder. They all remind us that we can trust, that we can trust God to whatever it is. doesn't mean that we're not going to get scraped up, bruised, bumped up along the way. But it means that we trust that wherever God is taking us, he is able to work it towards his ends, to take it towards the glory of the kingdom of God. But we have to trust. We have to be willing to get down in the dirt and take a few hits. It's going to happen. As we prepare to begin our season of Lent, we have to remember Jesus' trust in the Father. Jesus' trust in the Lord. Took it all the way to the cross. Took it all the way to his own end. Do we have that kind of trust? Do we have that kind of faith? Do we have that kind of willingness to go wherever it is that God calls us? As you go out into the world this week, look for reasons to trust God. Look for the amazing and mighty and wonderful things that God has done in your life, in the lives of those around you, in the beauty of nature. Seek that one so that you can learn to better trust God, further trust God. When we seek those things, when we try to learn to trust God, we will find that we are called into more and more amazing things. And I'll promise you that it will be easy. <coughs> Or that it will seem like a safe journey. But if we listen to Jesus and we behold God's glory, I can promise you that we will be a part of God's kingdom in fullness for all of time. Amen. If there's anyone today that for the first time has found and trust in God and wants to make a profession of faith in Jesus Christ, we invite you to come forward and make that profession. If there's anyone who would like to join together with this body of Christ, knowing that we are learning to trust a God who calls us forward into great things and sometimes dangerous things, we invite you to come forward and join together with us. If there's anyone who would like to rededicate their lives, who would like to say, I am ready to trust God more fully, we invite
invite you to come forward as we stand and sing of that trust. We stand and sing hymn number 556, Trust and Obey. Blessing others with his light and goodness. In Jesus' name, amen.